Hi, welcome to Wake TV. I'm your host, Taylor Shaw. Autumn is here and there's a lot in store, so stay tuned. Do you have a septic system? I recently sat down with our wastewater team to learn more about how they're helping homeowners in Wake County. Hi, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, thank you so much for joining us. Let's start off this conversation by telling me a little bit more about the septic system inspections. Uh, Wake County currently is doing uh, o and inspections for type three, four, five, and six systems. Uh, so how it works is like we will send out mailer to homeowner or the property owner, let them know the upcoming inspections and uh, we county staff will be there uh, in next uh, month or next quarter. And so what do homeowners need to do to prepare for this? Uh, if they don't have any arrangement like a locked fence or uh, like a dog in the, in the yard uh, close to the system, uh, they do not need to be home. It's just we just give them a heads up and you know, let them know if they saw somebody, if they see somebody uh, in the yard uh, wearing Wake County Environmental Services safety vest and driving Wake County vehicle and also, you know, have a Wake County badge. That, that's our uh, Wake County staff is doing on the inspections. How does scheduling for the inspections work? Uh, Wake County will schedule the inspection. Uh, Wake County Environmental Services will schedule the inspections. And this inspection is free of charge. Uh, we do not need homeowner uh, do anything if they don't have like a locked fence or a pet, a dog close to the system. They need uh, to make an arrangement. Other than that, homeowner does not need to be home. During this inspection, what is actually being inspected? Can you go share a little bit of information about that? Yes, uh, there are different types of systems. Uh, for example, most homeowner have a pump system. So what we county inspector will do is like they will inspect their septic tank, pump tank, uh, their uh, pressure manifold, uh, their drain field to make sure every component works properly. Why is Wake County doing this? Uh, there are two folds. One is uh, this is a state mandated inspections required by uh, rules, state rules. Uh, and second is like we want to make sure the homeowner's septic system <laughs> work properly. And so are there any other steps that homeowners need to know to take advantage of this program? Uh, we just want the collaboration from homeowners. Um, you know, when we knock the door, hope they are welcoming this inspection because we are here to help. Um, this is like make sure their systems are functioning uh, properly. And if there's any issue, we can let them know uh, in, the, in its early stage, it, it will avoid like more expensive repair down the road. And if homeowners want to find more information, where can they find it online? Uh, it's on our website, uh, so it, if you go to wakecounty, uh, wake.gov uh, and navigate environmental services, uh, tracking down water quality, uh, uh, wastewater, septic, it will, they will find the information. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this very vital information for homeowners. Thank you for the opportunity. I work elections because I enjoy serving my neighbors. I work elections because I wanted to be a part of the process and see how it's all done. I love elections because of the community aspect, seeing all your friends and neighbors. I work elections because it's important to let my community know how important it is to let your voice be heard. I work the election because it is fun. To learn more about how you can work elections, visit wake.gov slash elections slash get involved. Are you hosting an event but don't have a convenient way to collect trash and recycling? Wake County is excited to announce a new event recycling program that's free for residents. 
Whether you're hosting a private event, wedding, neighborhood party, or even a festival, these portable stations include composting, recycling, and trash bins. To learn more about how you can reserve an event recycling station for your next gathering, visit wake.gov slash event recycling. Each year between October and March, the Warmth for Wake program brings volunteers together who chop up firewood and deliver it to those who need it most all over the county. Weather permitting, volunteers meet every other Saturday throughout the winter to chop and deliver firewood. In addition to firewood delivery, Warmth for Wake also distributes new and gently used space heaters to residents in need. If you'd like to learn more about how you can help, please visit the website on your screen. We're back. Today, I'm here with Lauren Hendrickson, and we're gonna talk about the Farmland Preservation Program. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, glad to be here, thanks for having me. Awesome, so let's start off and tell me about the aim of the Farmland Preservation Program. So the aim of the program is to protect agricultural lands um, so that we have places to grow food in the future. Um, however, our program, we have three different components. There's the Voluntary Agricultural District, uh, which is a voluntary program for landowners to enroll in, and they basically are making an agreement with us to enroll their farmland for a period of 10 years and saying that we're going to be a farm for that time. Um, however, it's voluntary and they can remove themselves at any point, but it's really a good way to show to the community that you care about um, what you're doing with your land and you care about agriculture. The next step is the Enhanced Voluntary Agricultural District. Um, this one is a little more commitment than the VAD. It also has a 10-year commitment, but the, the commitment is noted on the deed of the property. So this deed, restri deed restriction, and it means that agriculture must still be practiced. So the land can be sold, but it can't be subdivided and changed in use. So you can't just turn it into a subdivision in that 10-year period for EVAD. Then finally, you have conservation easements. That is the strongest um, kind of option that we have. And a conservation easement is a permanent agreement to keep the land in agriculture forever. Um, and this is really, this is our main focus because we want to protect land long term instead of just um, short term and, and involuntary ways that a landowner can uh, remove themselves if, if they wish. So uh, conservation easements are our main focus. How will this help save farmlands? So directly the conservation easement will ensure that this farm and, and this land is never developed. So it will stay in agricultural use forever. Um, However, it also sends a message to the county and the community that people care about farmland preservation. Uh, it's become a, a really big movement both in the county and, and across the state. Um, there's been recent reports of the amount of farmland lost uh, both here in the county and across the nation. So signaling that you're willing to do a conservation easement really shows the ultimate commitment to preserving farmland. And what's special about the Oakey Grove farmland? So Oakey Grove is very special. It is. Um, it's a bicentennial farm, so it's been in production for over 200 years. Uh, it's been in the same family since the um, 1790s. Um, it originally started at around 350 acres and grew to over 4,500 at one point in time. Um, there's a historic farmhouse, which is on the National Registry of Historic Places. Um, in addition, it's also very prime farmland soils, so you know, we've got the historical uh, value with it, but 97% uh, of soils on the farm are of statewide importance for agriculture, so they're very productive soils. Uh, and finally, also its location in the county. So it's, it's part of the Marsh Creek rural landscape, and that is a designated area for natural and scenic protection in the county. And there's already been a lot of investment in that region, both in conservation easements, farmland protection, and also nature preserves. So it's really a, a corridor that uh, we need to protect, and it's a, it's a great piece to have in that. How many acres of land have been preserved through this program? So um, if you date back to when the kind of VAD started, which is the first component of the Farmland Preservation Program, we've got 11,811 acres in the VAD program. Um, however, this is the first conservation easement that the Wake County Farmland Preservation Program has uh, completed. So for that, we only have this farm, which is 112 acres preserved. Um, but we are working on a lot more, so we should have a lot more to come, but I think you could say roughly 12,000 acres. Okay, and so how will this be used in the future? So the farm in the future will be used as it is today. So one of the things with the agricultural easement is that you can change what you do agriculturally. So currently it's majority forest, um, but it could change to row crop or another type of production, um, but it will stay in agriculture. So that, that part is set. Um, 
And as far as the, the people attending the farms, there's a, there's a group of refugee farmers who are uh, renting a portion of it now. Um, I think they have plans to stay for the long term. But you know, farm plans always change, um, production changes, trends change, so it could, could definitely see some changes in the future. Uh, I know that the landowner is also working on um, preserving and really restoring the old farmhouse as well. Um, but it should, it should look as it does for a very long time. So how does this application process work? So are, um, are there gonna be more applications for a conservation easement? Yes, yeah. So the application process is, is kind of long and complicated. So our main avenue for easements is to seek funding through state and federal grants. Um, that often means we're working on a multi-year timescale for these projects. We, we got in kind of at the later stage of this project, and so we were able to help out a um, partner of ours, Triangle Land Conservancy, bring this to the, to the finish line. Um, but usually easements are going to take probably one to three years and it's going to involve a very kind of um, hands-on process of us working with the landowner to uh, complete applications for funding, uh, work with them through all the due diligence documents for easements. So it's really like a real estate transaction. You go through survey, um, title, you have an appraisal. So all these things need to be done too. Um, but currently we're working with six different landowners on projects. So we are we're working hard and we have a lot of interest. So we're trying to capitalize on that. I believe our next one should finish uh, by the end of the year. So hopefully we'll have another one then. And so what are some of the benefits for, for the program? So benefits for the program, I think it depends on who you're looking at as the beneficiary too. So from the county standpoint, you're protecting agricultural land for production in the future, saving open space and green space, which are top voter priorities. So that's a win for the county. Um, you're also maintaining land and ag and so uh, lower uh, tax need. So agricultural land doesn't cost as much to serve as, as residential and commercial land. Um, and then as far as um, from the landowner's perspective, they are compensated uh, for working on an easement. So they're not getting anywhere near the full value, full appraisal value of the land, but they get as much of the conservation easement value as we can get them. Um, and so there are caps on federal and state programs. But So there is a, a, a modest financial benefit for the landowners, um, but it's really more about preserving the land and the legacy. Lauren, thank you so much for your time today and sharing more information about the Farmland Preservation Program. It's an honor, happy to help, um, and I look forward to the next opportunity I get to, to speak more about it. Thank you. Thank you. Get the timely and accurate information you need to stay safe if there's an emergency in your area. Sign up for Ready Wake Alerts and Wake County will send you important notifications by text, phone, or email, whichever way you choose. Whether it's severe weather, a missing person report, or a neighborhood evacuation, Stay in the know with Ready Wake Alerts. Learn more and sign up at readywake.com. Did you know one in 30 baby boomers has hepatitis C? People born between 1945 and 1965 are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. Hepatitis C can hide in the body for years or even decades and can cause cirrhosis, cancer, and even death. The good news is hepatitis C can be treated. The first step is to get a simple, free blood test. Don't be a statistic. Visit wake.gov slash hep C today to schedule your free blood test. We're back. In this segment, we're talking about the value of your property and something Wake County conducts every four years called revaluation. We know it's a subject that gives a lot of people anxiety, but here to help us explain and dispel the myths are Tax Administrator Marcus Kinraid and Deputy Tax Administrator Nicole Kreiser. Thank you both for being here today. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. So one thing we want to make clear right at the start, right at the top, is often when people hear the word revaluation, they immediately think about property taxes, revaluation. And it's only one part of that, right? That's right. Um, so the fundamental basis of property tax in North Carolina is 100% fair market value on January 1. That sets 
the basis for how the tax burden is distributed in North Carolina. It takes the value and it takes the tax rate to formulate a tax bill. Uh, we're on a four-year cycle in Wake County, so we do this once every four years. That was shortened from eight years in 2016. The market changes dramatically on a four-year cycle. It's especially changed this particular cycle with the pandemic. Uh, so we periodically have to revalue all properties to sync them up with the market. So it takes the budget process that the county commissioners and the municipalities will conduct next spring uh, tied to the new value to create the tax bill. Let's talk about that. How big is the effort? Wake, Wake is the largest county in the state and we're growing fast. How many pieces of property are we talking about, Nicole? You're right. Wake County is very large. We are over 857 square miles, and that's 425,000 properties in Wake County. That's going to range. It's going to be single family homes. It's going to be farmland, forest land, apartment buildings, warehouses to commercial high rises. All of that isn't going to change the same. And so it really is what we're looking at at individual markets in different areas to determine um, if your value is going to go up, go down, stay the same. It really depends on the type of property and where it's at. So the best way to know how much my property is valued is to put it on the market and see how much it sells for. But not everyone has sold their homes or businesses in the last four years. So how do they do this? So we conduct what's called a mass appraisal. We divide our properties in Wake County up into what are called valuation neighborhoods. We have about 5,100 valuation neighborhoods for our 425,000 parcels. Within those neighborhoods, we combine properties that are similar, similar in size, similar in age, similar in condition. We then use sales within those neighborhoods to value properties that didn't sell. The second part of the process after looking at our neighborhoods is to value our land. We will look at land sales, we'll set lot values. The third part is to go to the field. Uh, for this particular project, we are inspecting 165,000 properties in the field. Every commercial property, every rural property, and every home that was built prior to 2000, we are inspecting in the field. We're doing that to understand the condition of the property. And then after we send out the notices in January, then we start the appeals process. Um, we may have up to five or 10% appeal rate in the county, people that disagree with our values. So there's a process, both an informal and a formal process for property owners that want to appeal. Tell us a little bit more about the appeals process and how it's going to look this revaluation cycle. Sure, so we're going to send out our notices on January 18th. The notices will have uh, information pamphlet inside it. We are launching new electronic tools so that uh, property owners can see sales in their neighborhood, compare their assessment to their neighbors, see if it's accurate and equitable. If someone disagrees with our value, they can appeal informally if they want, and the deadline to do that will be March 1st. And then if they're still not satisfied or if they would rather appeal to the Board of Equalization and Review, the deadline to do that will be May 15th. What's the difference between an informal and a formal appeal? Sure, so an informal appeal is, is a very, uh, as the word alludes to, informal process. Someone can simply call our office, they can come down uh, to ask to speak to a staff member to help understand how we came up with their value. We'll look at their data of their property. Sometimes there's an inaccuracy in the data and simply fixing that problem will resolve their value concern. Uh, if someone wants to appeal formally, uh, we have a citizens board of, of people who have expertise in the local market. They're called the Board of Equalization and Review. They're appointed by the county commissioners and they will meet and property owners can come in to a hearing and actually present their case to the board of ENR. That's what's a formal process. Many people may not even know their current assessed value. How do they find that? So our current assessed values are based off of the last revaluation, which was January 1st, 2020. The easiest way to find your assessed value as of January 1st is to go online. You can go to the tax administration webpage. You can go to wake.gov slash tax slash real estate. We have a real estate search function 
put in your property address, put in your name, and you can see your assessed value. So what would happen if we didn't do this? Well, first of all, we have to. Uh, state law in North Carolina requires every county to revalue properties at least once every eight years. In 2016, the county commissioners chose to shorten that cycle to four years. The thought process was a shorter time frame, there would be less uh, fear and, and sticker shock from large valuation increases. So uh, the purpose of it is to redistribute the tax burden based on value. If we didn't do it, then uh, you may be taxed at 60% of fair market value while your neighbor across the street is taxed at, say, 90% of fair market value. It's inherently unfair, and that's why we conduct it as frequently as we do. And so, Nicole, you and your team have been doing a lot to try to tell people about tax relief programs that are available. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Sure. So there are three tax relief programs, property tax relief, that are authorized by the North Carolina General Statutes. Um, they're the same tax relief programs for all 100 counties, and so Wake County administers tax relief under those guidelines and rules. The programs are Elderly and Disabled, a Circuit Breaker program, and Veterans, and essentially they're tax relief that are for folks who are 65 years of age and older, 100% or 100% disabled, or if you're a veteran who has a service-connected disability of 100%. Um, we've been sharing information with our community partners, and we really want to encourage folks to go online. You can go to wake.gov slash tax relief, or you could call our office at 919-856-5400. Um, our staff's here. We're willing to answer questions. We're willing to point you to the application, mail you an application, help you find the application online, and um, just get the word out. You were recently called out in a study. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So there's always a concern about um, bias and regressivity in property tax. The Harris School of Public Policy at the University of Chicago has conducted an ongoing study in property tax fairness. The, the author of that study, his name is Dr. Chris Berry, he did an interview with the New York Times and he talked about regressivity and bias in tax assessments. And one thing he told them was clearly there's evidence that it can be overcome and done right. And he referenced three jurisdictions nationally that regularly overcome regressivity and property tax. He referenced Maricopa County, Arizona, Harris County, Texas, and Wake County, North Carolina. So to me, that was, uh, it validated that our techniques, our methods work, uh, that, that what we produce is fair, but especially, um, important to me was the fact that both Maricopa County and Harris County revalue their properties every year. Wake County only does it once every four years. It's far easier to overcome regressivity and bias the more frequently that you reappraise your property. So to me, that was especially um, important. Awesome. Way to go, Wake County. <laughs> um, what would you say are some of the challenging parts of the process? We have a lot of parcels. Uh, Wake County is the largest county in the state, 425,000 parcels. So to, to produce a fair assessment across the board with every property is extremely difficult. It's also a lot of customer service, a lot. Um, and everyone has a different viewpoint on, on what's, what's fair and what's not fair. Not everyone likes property taxes. Not everyone draws services. They don't have kids in the school system anymore. They, they haven't called the sheriff or, so they don't understand why they have to pay property taxes. So from my perspective, just the volume and the customer service load is, is the most challenging. Nicole, did you have any thoughts on the most challenging part? I would say there's just confusion. We have really your property tax bill, as Marcus was saying, is made up of two parts, your assessed value and your property tax rate. Um, folks believe that with assess, um, a revaluation, your tax bill is going to go up. Essentially, it's 
there's a decision. We are setting your assessed value, but there's a part that also comes later, which is the property tax rate, which will also determine at the end how much you pay in taxes. So this process really is about making sure your assessed value is equitable and it reflects current market value. And that's the part we want to educate and share. And on the other side of that, what is the most rewarding part? So, so we're appraisers. We're appraisers at heart. We, we go to school, we take all kinds of classes to learn how to appraise properties, and then we only get to do it once every four years. So this is a, this is a chance for us to, to show our stuff, to unleash our skills, and really practice our trade. We live here, right? Um, we're homeowners, we're property owners. Um, we have family members who are in the same boat. And so we're personally invested in getting right, and I think it's really valuable when you see tangible results impacting everyone in the county and knowing that the effort and all of the work has paid off. Awesome. So the next steps, you and your teams are still busy at work um, doing analysis and on January 16th, you're going to present the values to the Board of Commissioners. And then just a few days later, all property owners should get their new values in the mail, right? That's right. January 18th, we expect to mail out uh, notices of new value. At that point, um, there will be information contained in the new value letters that explain the process, explain next steps. We're uh, launching new tools so that property owners can see sales on a map adjacent to their properties to compare their assessment to their neighbors and see if it's fair. Uh, if they disagree with our value, they can appeal informally to our office, and then they can also appeal formally to the Wake Board of Equalization and Review. And the last day to appeal there is May 15th. That was great info. Thank you so much for being here. We know you'll be busy from now until Christmas. And again, I want to encourage everyone to reach out now if you have any questions. Email revaluation at wake.gov. Call your fully staffed call center at 919 857 3800. Visit us here in the Wake County government offices inside the Wake County Justice Center in downtown Raleigh or go to wake.gov slash revaluation. We want cake. We want cake. We want cake. We want cake. You remember we to get the cake, cake, right? I thought we you were getting cake. the cake. We want cake. What? No cake? Ah! <laughs> Things are better when you plan. Learn more about what we're planning at wake.gov slash planwake. Hi, on the count of three, one, two, three, boom. Everybody feel good? Sir, yes, sir. Where are we? Wake County, sir. Who are we? Wake County, County 14, sir. What are we planning to do? Make Wake County a better place to work, live, and play, sir. Academy 14 got fear! There's nothing to fear but fear itself! Academy 14 got no fear, sir! Hey! Hooray! Fast! That's all for this episode of Wake TV. Keep up with all the latest Wake County news by visiting us online at wake.gov slash news. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube so you can always stay in the loop. We'll see you next time.